Right, guys, I'm super excited. I mean, I, uh, I'm i excited, but I'm disappointed in a way because today I had a, a big loss and I didn't get the job I wanted. But I'm also excited because the last five hours since I got home, I've just been working on this project. I called it Project Gambit. And the whole point of this project really is to allow the creation. Um, so it basically creates um, a Docker file on the fly and it also creates a Docker image. So it builds the image itself on Docker and then it automates the deployment of that image to Azure. And this is done all without human intervention and no Terraform is used as well. So the only thing that I used are is the um, Docker and um, Azure and obviously Python, um, and then that's it really. Um, so this is the, the code behind it. So I'm just gonna show you exactly what, what we're gonna do. So we're basically going to create a ACR. So that's the Azure container registry on Azure. And then we're gonna log into the ACR. And then once we log in, we're gonna create a Docker file. We're gonna come back again and we're gonna create a Docker file. And the Docker file is gonna be based on a trace route batch script. Um, sorry, I'm from talking fast, by the way. I am just so excited. Um, we're going to then create a Docker image. Um, and we the Docker image will be based on that Docker file. So this is the containerized app itself. Um, and then we're gonna have to tag the Docker image. It has to be tagged before it's uploaded to the um, container registry. And then we're going to push that Docker image to the created Azure container registry, um, the one that we created in step one. Okay, here's the code and we're gonna test it afterwards while it's on the actual server. So here's the code. Um, I'm just gonna run through the code now. Um, but first, before I do that, I'm gonna actually go on to um, Azure and I'm going to delete a one that I've already had on there. So, so you can actually see it yourself. Okay, so let me just quickly do that now. So yeah, so I'm gonna basically start from fresh on Azure so you can see now. So this is the container registry. So as you can see, there is nothing in there, completely empty. Let me just refresh it for you there. So it's completely empty um, as you can see. Um, so now we're going to run Gambit and um, Project Gambit and let's see whether it does follow through and create everything. So I hope you're ready. So let's go, um, let's create um gambit okay run okay so gambit is now running the first thing it's going to do is log into azure um there we are it's running and it's quite imperative as well so it actually checks for things um whether it's already created the resources similar thing to what terraform would do so there we are and so it's now created the um the ACR in the um, the resource group. As you can see, it's now building the Docker file and it's now creating the Docker image based on that file. Now, last but not least, it's created. So it's created a Docker file, then it's created the Docker image. And now it's going to create, um, it's going to um, push the image um, onto Azure. Okay, so let's wait for this a little bit because as you know, it has to, Azure has to sort of build all the resources. All right, come on. Come on. I am so excited about this today. I, I honestly cannot believe I made this work. Uh, I've been here for about five hours trying to get this to work. Um, and again, it's just all, um, cloud deployment without Terraform. This is just from Python, Docker, and um, Azure, nothing else. Um, obviously, we, I could have used Terraform, but I didn't want to because I, I feel as though um, it's, you know, I'm sort of including, oh, there we are. So it's now pushing the registry, um, as you can see, to Azure. It's pushing the container, sorry, the actual app that it created. To container so it created an app and it's now pushing the app to azure amazing and it's all doing this guys without no human intervention whatsoever done it's pushed it over so now let's have a look at the azure portal portal so we can just confirm and here we go refresh fingers crossed 
there we are see that guys it's there the auto that's the name of the container registry and the app should be called the auto app so let's now look at the app so repositories and the app should be in here hopefully it's so slow today there we are the python app the batch script is here so now let's go ahead and actually test this so uh, we're going to actually um, test this directly with um, with docker so let's actually log in um, so let's so docker um, no, actually sorry sorry I'm just so tired today and we're going to push no oh, what am I saying what am I saying push docker run and we're going to run the app directly as you can see from the azure server so this is going straight onto azure and it's running it directly from azure so let's see if it works so it's a tracer app there we are it started it started the container again this is not running from my local host um, it's running directly from Azure from the resource group um, and there we are and obviously to distri redistribute this you would just have to put it into a vnet or you know a subnet inside a vnet and you know create gateways and you know create your virtual infrastructure if you like and um, give access to whoever you want really to this app um, your system there is actually pinging. Can you? I mean, it's actually doing a trace route. Can you believe it? From the Azure server itself, um, from that region, um, I think it's Western Europe. I put it in, and it's going across to Google and doing the trace route there. And it's going to just continue doing that loop. So let's just let it run and see what it what happens. So watch. So it's not going to be a single um, tracer. It's just going to continue doing it. It's continuous. And the reason why I've done this is because um, you will see if the hops change, because the hops will probably change, um, because, you know, they're probably using a load balancer somewhere, especially right before the actual, um, before it gets to the, its final destination. So the hops are probably going to change, or, you know, they're probably using a load balancer or something like ECMP. Um, but let's have a look. So... Should be getting there. If not, I'm just going to probably stop it. And so it's going over to Google. And let's have a look. It's a lot of hops it's going through, isn't it? There, it's done it. Um, it's got to, that was number eight. Now it's going to start again on its own. Again, all of this without human intervention. And then it's going to do it again. There we are. We started the same process again, and it's going to just do it over again. So what will happen is if you look at hop seven, that's probably going to change. So the hop seven where it's one, four, two, two, five, one, that's probably going to change and go into something else. Um, they're probably using a load balancer. Ideally, it should go through the same route um so it should be like transversing through the same number of hops or the same exact hops but that's not always the case um, um as you probably will see now um something will change because of a load balancer has been used so so far it seems to be the same so as you can see it's using the 151 address um, on number three hop three and hop four is no request, so that could be due to probably a firewall. Um, yeah, some sort of ace or something. Um, so let's look at five. Hop five is the same. So you can see hop five is the same, 72, 14. It may be go through the same route, but not always the case. Not 100% guaranteed that will go. So, so that's the same on number six. So let's look at number seven. Will it go through the same hop? 
it probably is on this occasion but if you run it a number of times you realize oh there we are look it's completely on number seven it's gone through a different route to get to 888 so now look we know now um, we've got two different you know sets of data that we could compare um, and it's probably going to run it again but i'm not going to show it to you but i just wanted to show you this the whole point of this while you would want a, uh, a looping tracer look at this look at number seven on here on the second and look at number seven on the first one can you see what's happened here um, it's using a load balance a, probably a load balancer or e, like I said ECMP equal cost multipath so it's going to, it's taking basically another path um, so yeah this is the the whole point really the whole point I wanted to show you so we've actually uploaded we've created the app on the fly um, in real time the container it's um, the container itself the containerized app and we pushed it to Azure and um, we've basically are running it directly from Azure now, which is just amazing. All right, guys, thank you. Take care. Hopefully, I will going to have the source code of this in, uh, in, my, uh, in my GitHub so you guys can use it, fork it, do whatever you want with it. Um, but it's just, um, you know, it's just way of, again, showing you that you don't need any human intervention to do these things. And you don't even really need things like Terraform. Well, they are helpful, but you don't actually need them. All right, take care, guys. Bye.